This is an atom, and it is what everything is made of, big and small. So we must all bow down and worship it. <clears throat> Anyways, this had me thinking, what if I dramatically shrunk down the scale and created an entire ecosystem that is completely self-sufficient and home to predator and prey? But not everything went to plan. Oh my god, he's escaped. In this video, I will be upgrading my ecosystem in five main stages. So let's begin with stage one. On the first day, I mix together my substrate, which then acts as the base layer for the ecosystem, which now allows me to move on to stage two. After a long consideration, I knew how I wanted to decorate the ecosystem. So I went and foraged for sticks and stones and collected as many as I could and began to decorate my ecosystem. Finally, I was happy with how it looked, so I moved on to stage three. So these are the two cacti that are gonna be going in. Here's a large one, uh, it's got like three connected to one. And then a little skinny one here. Ow! Oh my god, that hurts, you know. This is day three, and the isopods have just arrived. So we're gonna take a look at them, and then we're gonna go ahead and put them in their habitat. And be sure to stay tuned, because we're gonna put the predator in, in just a little bit. So all of the isopods are in here. These are dairy cows, so they're gonna be a part of the cleanup crew. So let's get these little guys in their home. Whoa, look at them go. As you can see, they were right at home and they got straight to work. Within a few minutes of being there, they'd pretty much found where they were comfortable. After this, in order to prepare for the predator that I planned to add, I decided to add some prey in here. This concluded of Mario worms and meal worms. Two things that I think the predator will enjoy quite a lot. Just a quick one guys, if you are enjoying this video, please be sure to like and subscribe with notification bells on so I can continue to bring you more content. As you can see, only one there. They're kind of are hiding away a little bit. As you can see here, I started adding in the mealworms as well, and to my surprise, they were so much more livelier than the Mario worms. I thought that the Mario worms were going to be so much more lively and active, but it turns out that the mealworms were much more active than they were, so that was interesting to see. To my surprise, these worms weren't as bothered about burrowing as I thought they would be. I thought that these worms would be burying themselves as much as possible. A few of them did, but quite a few of them weren't too interested in it, at least not right off the bat. Today is day five, we've got the bucket hat on, which means it's time to put the predator in. So here's the big reveal. Can you hear it hissing? I don't know which way it's gonna come out. I don't want to know. Hopefully it's not just free in the box. That would be a bit terrifying if it was. But I think it's gotta be in another box, right? Bro. Yeah, it's in here. Oh my God. Uh. Here it is, the big reveal. We've got a scorpion to add to our ecosystem. Oh. It's moving now. I've never seen a scorpion like in real life before. I think it's dead. It looks it, doesn't it? Actually, the scorpion here was in fact not dead. It turns out that the majority of scorpions are actually nocturnal, something that I had not realized prior to filming this. Now, you may be wondering, what type of scorpion is this? Originally, I was meant to receive a desert scorpion, but they sent me this one out because there was a stock issue. So this is a Heterometrus silenus, also referred to as the Asian forest scorpion, and it's most commonly found in East Asia. This specific species will burrow whenever they're given the chance to, typically during the day, when they're being nocturnal. This specific species does not do well on only sand substrate, which is why I had mixed the sand and soil into one. By doing this, I provide it with a much more sufficient environment. Typically, this scorpion is not massively aggressive with its stinger, unless you invade its privacy or territory. They are more likely to pinch you first and only really tend to sting if they are annoyed or feeling territorial. The good news here is that the venom is said to be very mild and with a low toxicity. This is why many beginners will have these as pets. However, it is worth noting that these forest scorpions do tend to be a little more aggressive than some of the other species of scorpion. Now, as you can see in this clip playing here, I placed my small shovel in front of it, just as a way to move it backwards, since the substrate was a little bit high in the area that it was, and it could have caused a higher escape risk. So I needed to move him back to fix that. I made sure not to hurt it in any way whatsoever, but it didn't take too kindly to this, and it did try to attack it. You will notice that they go into a defense posture first as a way to say, hey, back off, before they actually attempt to attack. And now that I have explained and just given some interesting information about this scorpion, let's take a look and see how it interacts with the ecosystem that I have built. Look at this big guy, what should I call him? Scary Simon or something. He is trying to climb out. 
Do I tell him off? Simon, <laughs> Naughty sit Simon. down. Naughty Simon, get back. <laughs> One of the mealworms seems to have fallen into the water. Yeah, he seemed to have uh, not understood the assignment here. So I've woke up this morning and I've come out to the ecosystem and I've literally just seen him on the floor out here. I don't know how, but he's gotten out. If I had to guess, I would say probably the gap here. There's a bit of a gap from where the dirt is from the first day and I think he's buried underneath it. Oh, there's some of the millworms. We're gonna have to go and put him back in. I hope he doesn't get me now. <laughs> Let's get him back in his habitat. Simon was now back in his home, but literally only five minutes later, we had another unexpected guest. It would seem that a bee is trying to join our uh, ecosystem, uh, but I'm not sure you fit into the desert type ecosystem, to be honest. He's going crazy in there, he can't find his way out. Look at him, he can't find his way out. Watching the ecosystem that I had created finally come together and be working and being completely self-sufficient was amazing for me. I'd spent all of this time building up this entire ecosystem, but to finally see them all enjoying their environment, it was just amazing to see them all acting as if they would, but within a simulated environment. At first I was pretty nervous about putting the scorpion in, like when I got it I was like, oh I feel a bit nervous like handling stuff, and over time I just started to study him, just watch him, and I thought, Wow, this scorpion just really is, like, a nice little guy. I mean, granted, he was eating and feasting on the mealworms, but that's to be expected. I know a lot of people have fears of scorpions, but to me, like, I no longer had that fear. I was just like, this is quite cute. This is quite cool to see. And uh, I just got adjusted to him. Anyway, guys, that's been the video. If you have enjoyed, please like and sub, and I'll see you all in the next one.